music this afternoon from uh, from Groove Armada. It's Urban Beat FM, it's Monday afternoon, good afternoon to you. Now we're going to be talking about assistive technologies now. Now let's uh, first of all lay out uh, the scenario if you like. Uh, pedestrian crossings of course, you press the button, you wait for the green man, uh, then you cross the road. Now in current times we are being urged not to touch things. We're being told to sanitise after using door handles, avoid contact with surfaces when out. Um, now, members of the public who are perhaps blind or have a visual impairment, this of course adds to the difficulty. Now, the solution, you would hope that there is a, a company out there that would be dedicated to finding solutions to improving accessibility and inclusion. And there is. Um, we have a company in an Edinburgh-based company called uh, Neatbox, and the founder and CEO of Neatbox, Gavin Neat, joins me now on the, the programme. Good afternoon, Gavin. Uh, good afternoon, Barry. It's an absolute pleasure to be on your show. I have pronounced your name, first of all, right. It's uh, neat. <laughs> yeah, yes, uh, that's yeah. right. I've had lots. I've had Gavin Meat in the past. I've had quite a few different ones, but yeah, Gavin Neat is the name. Now, Gavin, the, the, what, the reason we have, I've seen a video on Facebook. There was a, a video shared on Facebook at the weekend. And the, the reason for speaking to you today, it featured Irvin, and it was something we weren't aware of. It's a technology that's been put in place in Irvin with regards to the pedestrian cro uh, crossings to assist uh, blind people. Can you tell us a bit about this? Yeah, sure, certainly. And uh, it's worth just saying it's not just blind people, it's actually for everybody. The best technologies are for everybody, mm -hmm. uh, that they're, they're totally accessible, that everybody can use. But a little bit about why and how it all happened. I worked for Guide Dogs for the Blind for 18 years. I used to train guide dogs and then train people how to use them. And I would always notice how hard it was for my clients to find the button and then press the button. And I, I did this from 96 till 2015. Okay. In 2011, I actually invented a pedestrian crossing that was operated by smartphones because my clients were all using smartphones. So I just thought, I wonder if the phone could press the button. And that's exactly what I did. And it's only really recently that people have shown a massive interest in it. Mm -hmm. uh, it was installed in Largs um, two, three years ago. Okay. Um, but we didn't really get much interest. But of course, because of COVID, because people not wanting to touch buttons, there's been a massive interest in, in actually non-contact technology. And mind you, we Scottish company. It's from Edinburgh. Uh -huh. And yeah, we now in Irvine. Okay, so, so this, it's actually in place in Largs as well. So where else is this in place? So basically, the, just to explain to our listeners, it's a, an app that you put onto your smartphone. And when you're approaching the pedestrian crossing, instead of pressing the button, on the actual machine or whatever it's called on the actual pedestrian crossing on the traffic lights you press a, a button on your your smartphone and it will send am i right in saying it sends a signal to the pedestrian crossing which then puts it to the green man that barry you've done it better than i could um <laughs> yeah so, <Okay. laughs> bear in mind a lot of people don't want to press the button now but for, for many many years uh, ever since there's been buttons there's been people who couldn't press the button mm -hmm. maybe not Finding it would be hard enough, but of course somebody in a wheelchair might not be able to get to it. So we put it onto the mobile phone, uh -huh. uh, and then we put a small piece of hardware into the pedestrian crossing box itself. It only takes about 20 minutes to put in. Mm -hmm. um, and then it means that the phone can press the button. That's all it can do. It can't, it can't interrupt the sequence or anything like that. It can do exactly the same as somebody would do if they're doing it manually. Right. But oh. you don't have to have the phone in your hand. You, the phone can be in your pocket. You just set it to automatic. And then when you get within a certain distance of the crossing, it presses the button for you. Now, that's great. Um, you, the truth is that uh, if I go up to a crossing, I'm able-bodied. If I go up to a crossing, I press the button, I cross the road. Sometimes we cross the road when there's no cars coming. But for many people, mm. we're actually making their lives easier. Absolutely. Uh, for many people, it's not going to help them that much. So if you have this app installed and it's in your pocket and you're walking past a pedestrian crossing, is it likely to trigger the, the button without you actually wanting to cross the road? Is that an issue or, or how does that work? Yeah, so if you're standing within a certain distance, it will press the button for you. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, that's, that's not a massive issue. You get people, children will press the button as they're walking past it, uh, or even adults will press the button and then cross without the green man coming on, and then the traffic will stop, and then it will start again. Right. That's the worst that it can do, is stop the traffic and then start again. But yeah, it, it'll do it from a certain distance, but you have to be within that certain distance okay. for it to press the button for you. Right, it sounds like a great idea, especially just now, as, as, as I kind of said in the introduction, we're being encouraged not to touch things. We're being encouraged 
not to, to touch door handles if we can and of course the pedestrian and, and ATM machines and, and this type of thing we're, we're being encouraged to use yeah. contactless uh, for making payments uh, so this is uh, this is I would imagine picking up pace this this initiative um, oh yeah you, you're 100% Barry we're actually installing it in London I can't tell you where yet because uh-huh. it's up to them to tell people but we're actually installing it in a door so the a disability access door so that the door would open without the person having to go and find the button now that is a massive step forward. This is making our city so much smarter, mm. um, and you, 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 it's going to make a lot of people's lives a hell of a lot easier. Yeah. Um, so this is in place. So I understand it's it's already. Am I right in saying this is uh, Gavin? This is you have this up and running in Irvine and around Irvine, or is it just in particular crossings? <laughs> yeah. Or? Yeah. So it's in all of the crossings in in Irvine, um, and it's in all the crossings apart from one in Larks. Okay. We've got one in Locker Briggs, and there's one at a, and I can't remember the name of it, it's a horse crossing, so that disabled riders can press the button as they're getting up to the crossing. But North Ayrshire is the first council uh, area in the world. In fact, this doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. So really? Well okay. done, North Ayrshire. But, yeah, well done, North Ayrshire. Uh, yes. We're really chuffed. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and did it take long to, to roll this out? Or, I mean, is this something that's just been, you've been working on this year? Or is it something that you, is it taking a while to put well, this in place? It took me a long time. I, I mean, I was working for Guide Dogs until 2015. I invented it in 2011, and it's really been a hard, long slog to get things to be installed. But because people know about it now, and because, well, as you say on Facebook, it went a bit crazy. Lots mm-hmm. of people in Irvine were talking about it. And look, Craig Happel, who was the guide dog owner, who actually said, Irvine, you need to install this, uh-huh. he, he'd mentioned it, and it was because of him that it even happened. So I think on the back of that, with more people saying, we want it, then it's much more likely to happen. And it's not an expensive solution. And in fact, the app itself is totally free. We don't put any adverts on there at all. People can just download the app and then use it totally for free. I was wondering this when um, when I seen the video, I thought, can anybody do this? Can anybody download this app and have it on their phone? Or is it specifically uh, for those who are perhaps registered who, uh, with some, some form of disability? But you're saying that anybody can install this, this app and, um, and anybody at all wow. anybody at all Barry and I think if you think about it from the point of view of mm, they first put buttons on pedestrian crossings the idea that a pedestrian could stop the traffic was just unheard of yeah. the idea that I mean, you'd think back to the days when there were horses on the road. You wouldn't walk out in front, and you probably wouldn't want to stop them. You would wait until it had gone. But times have changed. A lot of these places are more pedestrianized. We want humans to have the freedom to walk around cities. And if you're constantly having to look left and right to to look at these 30-mile-an-hour cars that are going past, well, hey, it's about time that things started going back in towards the favor of the, of the pedestrian, mm-hmm. especially with so many elderly and disabled people around. Brilliant. So you have you've got some other inventions up your sleeve involving opening doors. We, we're, we're intrigued. Well, I'm intrigued about this. It all sounds absolutely fantastic. <laughs> so so there we are. So the people of Arvin, you you now you know you can install an app, and the app is called is it is it just, is it called Neatbox? It's it's just no. It's called Button by Neatbox. Button by Neatbox. B u t t o n b y n e a t e b o x. So button by Neatbox. Just watch out for that sneaky E in the middle of Neatbox. Ah, okay. And um, and it's available on on Google Play and and the Apple Store. I understand. And uh, yeah, and you'll be able to yeah. change the traffic lights without touching the button. Um, <laughs> genius. You can. Yeah. And it's and North Ayrshire is the first in the in the world, not in, not in the UK, in the world to, no, man, to have the world. this yeah, technology you guys in place. Um, the innovation in, in absolutely North brilliant. Um, many, many thanks, Gavin, the, the the founder and CEO of Edinburgh-based uh, Neatbox this afternoon. Uh, Gavin, thanks for taking the time to speak to us. Lovely, lovely to hear from total you. Total pleasure, total pleasure. Thank thanks, you. Barry. Cheers, uh, mate. Thank you, Brian. Um, Gavin, there wasn't that fantastic. So in Irvine already, you can do this in Irvine now. You can install this app, and you can now change the traffic lights without touching the button. Genius. Fantastic. Uh, It's Urban Beats FM. Good afternoon.